I mean, I can't hear it regardless. So yeah. yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> now you can hear me uh <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry guys uh you yeah and um, yeah yeah now you can we're hear just me wait for it to yeah we're just gonna wait for it to catch up it's fine <laughs> My audio input oh, is different than theirs. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm glad that you want to hear my voice. You know, at least we're still at that stage in the relationship. <laughs> and it's not, oh, she's muted. We won't say anything, you know? <laughs> um, okay. So uh, now that I'm unmuted, hi. This is our fourth wing spoiler chat. So a few things I want to quickly say. Number one, this is a full spoiler discussion of book one of Fourth Wing. Um, number two, if you do not have Fourth Wing, don't stress. We are doing a buddy read of Fourth Wing in the realm in October, right before the release of Iron Flame. I keep wanting to call it Iron Wing. <laughs> it's not. I know. <laughs> the amount of times I've been like, Iron Wing! And I was like, that's not right. Um and uh, so don't stress. And this is also going to be really good for rereaders because I feel like um, it's the type of book that like I definitely want to reread. I don't know if anyone else does. Um, I think all of us here, question mark, have the sprayed edge one, sprayed edges. D is anyone going to tab that book? No. <gasps> you insane <laughs> human. <laughs> it's not a special edition. I it's know special it is. in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to three hundred dollars right now, Kate. I don't care. It's not like I'm going to sell it. Wait, I, what? I had this whole conversation. I had this whole conversation on Instagram earlier today, and I think the whole like charging a shit ton and reselling books is really harmful to our community. So yes, I would never do that anyway. Yes, like I can see someone selling it for like fifty bucks. Like it was twenty six yes. originally. That's fine. But like, I'm not going to sell it. Like I. Loved it enough that I wanted to tab it and I'm going to tab it. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more because um, fun fact, hold on. Let me just quickly show to prove that I'm not a liar. Number one, I have Amanda who's in our chat right now. I have her copy that I need to get to her pretty soon. But number two, because I think I can do this with the headphones on. Also, I didn't just tab it, but I also highlighted in it and uh, wrote in it with pencil. But this is the highlighter life. is permanent. <laughs> I can't. Pencil makes sense. It's well loved. So these are also two copies of Fourth Wing that I am not selling, but I literally bought for our community to give away when we do our buddy read in October because I knew these were going to be so hard to find. And I was like, well, I'd like to buy some for someone who, like me, and I'm always in the situation where I read the book past when the sprayed edges are sold out. And then I'm so sad that I missed out. And then it's $300. So these are two copies I'll be giving away for someone who doesn't have them or anything. They do have the Target sticker and I am not going to try and take it off. Just so anyone's wondering. A hair dryer. Yeah. That's a good that works so well, and I, it doesn't leave residue. It stresses me out. You can do it on your own. It was 30% off in case anyone's <laughs> wondering. So, um, but yeah, I literally bought these two giveaway. I'm not selling them. I'm not doing anything crazy. But I agree with you. I saw, okay, not going to lie. I saw someone sell an Ark of Air of Fire for $3,000. But who is buying that? 3000 Yeah. I just like... I mean, it's, it's on both sides. It's like the people that are actually purchasing are also part of the problem because they're actually paying these exorbitant right. prices. Like, I, what? Just I, say I, no. I will admit that I paid an exorbitant amount of money for my arc of Throne of Glass. However, yeah. it was the first Throne of Glass. It's the first arc that Sarah J. Mass has ever released. Second, I did not pay in the four-figure number. I paid in the hundreds. And I split it with my mother. It was a birthday present for me. So, like, I... That is the only one I can excuse because it's similar to like, this is a bad example, but it's similar to like, you know, the Harry Potter one that's like, what does it go for? It's like 30,000 million, uh, something like that. Crazy. So I put it in that category. But the fourth wing arcs, by the way, I also want to say I'm kind of irritated that the US did not get the quadrant Same. ones. If anyone has a healer copy, I would do... I would literally... I'm not giving you a Throne of Glass arc. I can tell you that right now. But I would... 
I mean, I know you're not supposed to buy arcs, but like I would trade, do whatever to get that because for anyone who doesn't know, when I play games, I'm always a healer. So like I want the healer one. I don't want the writers. I want the healer one. Um, oh, last thing I'm going to say, because I never say this in a live, but I'm going to say this because I was, I did not receive an arc for fourth wing. Um, I did, I, I just didn't and that's okay. But if you're watching this live, make sure you at some point take a screenshot and tag Red Tower and Rebecca. So she knows that we are all live, <laughs> um, because I am really, really trying to get like <clears throat> us to have a conversation with her right before Iron Wing. So help our flame. Oh, we'll make it happen. <laughs> We're going to make it happen I'm between all of us. <sighs> I'm going to say that so many times. It's so funny. It's like a dollar every time you say it. <laughs> iron, iron wing. It's going to be a lot. I know. But anyways, seriously, make sure you tag uh, Red Tower and um, Rebecca tonight so that she sees us because we we all really loved her book. Um, and yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. I, Some so. of us stayed up until five o'clock in the morning finishing it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. By us, I mean me. It was just me. Yeah. I say some of us already reread it. So I did. Yeah. I did not reread it. I saved the reread. Um, I will say this. It's so. This is this is the group of ladies, and we have a few others who are not in attendance tonight. Who we're all going to be reading Flame and Shadow together. I I started to get like I started to get like visions of what this was going to be like because Avery was up till five a.m. I was like asleep and then woke up at 6 a.m. and then was reading until like two o'clock and like Ashley was like taking her time I mean she read away before we did but like she was taking her time and you know whatever and then Kate who's probably I would say without a doubt Kate is our most um you would studious first time reader like without a doubt (laughs) and Well, yeah, it's a good thing. physical reason. But I did uh, audio for this one, so that's why I had to reread right away because I was mm-hmm. like, I'm missing things. I need to see the words on paper. It was it's just so funny because there wasn't that many well, there was a few times in this book that I called Avery and I was like, Hey, remember when this happened? And she's like, That's not what happened. You read that wrong. And that will happen in my favorite was what will also happen is I will be in the middle of something and Sarah will be like just behind me and come in and interrupt yeah. me. And at some point I'm going to throw the book at her. Yeah. I'm just going to be like, get out. Yeah. I also have, I love you. Get out. I have a really good sixth sense of every time calling Avery and being like, oh my God, this just happened. And she's like, I'm in the middle of spice. Don't talk to me. And she hangs up on me. So that will, when it happens almost like every time at this point. So, um, Oh, I was very confused by Zayden's neck tattoo. I was extremely confused. <laughs> like, I was confused about the tattoos in the beginning of the book. I was confused about, which I think I just was overthinking it. I didn't, like, read it wrong. I was just confused. Um, <laughs> the magic system in the beginning, I, again, overthinking it. But um, anyways, we've already started off to a chaotic start. So I, I think in our friend group, Ashley, you got the arc, so you read it first. She mm-hmm. begged us all to read it. Um, I did. <laughs> I was in somewhat of a reading slump because this mass read along takes a toll on Avery and I. So I didn't want to read fantasy. Um, we had basically decided as a team that we were going to wait until October. And then I called Avery and said, JK, I bought it. <laughs> Just immediately dove in. Which was really annoying for me because once I have a plan, I don't want the plan to change. And Sarah likes to throw wrenches into the plans. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Kate, I feel like you might have read it next yeah you were you and Avery were both done and then I did the audio in like two days I think yeah and then Cammy, I know you were not far from Avery and I yeah. no like you we had all started it the same day I think like mm-hmm. you said I'm gonna start um fourth wing and I was like ah but I had this other book I was gonna start with uh reading and you were like no no no, no fourth wing so I think we all started and you guys read faster than me so I had work so I think I was probably reading about the same time Kate was I um in fact I was reading at work <laughs> if anyone's watching watching from work <laughs> they now will know my work poker face because I, I we work in what we call like a cave like I basically sit in like a little bar um it's not an actual bar but it looks like it looks like there's supposed to be glass there and they just took it out so everyone can see me and it was the part where <laughs> Satan is like in the pit with Violet in front of everyone. And I was just reading it. And I was like, <laughs> I'm just reading on my computer. 
computer like flipping the pages and at one point someone walked by and they were like what are you reading and i was like nothing <laughs> please don't was it and then they all assumed it was spice but it was not spice but might as well have been at that point so uh -huh. <laughs> it was pretty good um but yeah, okay, so first impressions. What did you guys think of the book? Everyone pretty much loved it. Any um, Anything you want to point out before we get into Five real star. deep discussion? I loved it. I, I felt like we all, like, I don't know if you guys felt this, but I I found myself actually, like, laughing out loud mm -hmm. very frequently. And it's, yeah. like, rare for a book to actually make you do that. It's like, you know, there's haha, -ha, whatever. But, like, yeah. it was just... You know, or just like those little moments between her and Zayden where you're just like, oh, oh, my God. Like there was just a lot of like actual like I think that would actually be a really fun book to read in person together. Right. Okay. Like actually physically laughing and not just like huffing a breath. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like I was actually <laughs> cracking up being yeah. like, oh yeah. Yes. The chat at Taryn. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, had okay. me laughing on every page. My, so my favorite thing to say, because I said it immediately was when we were introduced to Taryn and we got his like voice I immediately went to our like Marco Polo chat and I was like it's James Earl Jones guys his voice <laughs> is James Earl Jones in my head I, I can't get it out of my head he is just Mufasa in my head yeah we're not talking Darth Vader we're talking Mufasa but you're so right yeah it's yeah right like it's the best so I will say I think probably first impressions for me. I only, the first read through on the audio, I only read it at four and a half because mm -hmm. I thought it read a little more YA than I wanted it to. But I think part of that was the issues with the audiobook and the head mm -hmm. cold that was occurring in the audiobook and the voices. Though once we met Taryn, it was like the grumpy old man voice was great. But then when I did the reread and it was like prepared for like the American Ninja Warrior kind of vibes, <laughs> like, yeah. then I was like, good. And then I, I think I was like 20% into the reread and I was like, no, this is five stars. So it was actually my first five star this year, apart from Manacled, which fanfic's like a whole different thing, but yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. I, it is I, very good. Um, I'm not going to lie. Someone said, oh, well you gave Hosab five stars. I think I gave Hosab five stars because of the ending, but if I'm going to be honest, this is my first five star read in a very, very long time. And I think it's just because the parts that I didn't like about the book is because I'm someone who wants to know the answers and I know she's waiting to reveal them. So I can't mm -hmm. even say I didn't like it. It's just that I couldn't figure it out, which I think is a good thing. So, and like, um, it's funny. And I, and I noticed I started doing this more recently. I don't tab the first reread. I don't believe like me personally, I don't believe in it because it, it stresses me out. I just want to enjoy the story. However, I typically read on my phone the first time. Um, cause I like the continuous scroll because I am a fan fiction reader. <laughs> um, and I noticed I highlighted certain passages that going back, I was like, ah, okay. I was, I was somewhat paying attention. In fact, one of them is tied to the first question in our Slido. So uh, when we get to it, um, it is about Violet's mother. So it's kind of funny how, I don't know. It, and I also don't think that's a bad thing about a book. If I, if as a fantasy reader, especially all of us here who read a lot of fantasy, if we can see those signs, it's almost like for me, a checklist in my head, like, okay. We're heading in the right direction. It's not a bad thing. And I think some people view that as a negative and I wouldn't say it is. Like the the predictability. Yeah. Like I think, yeah, I would agree. Like I think that I've seen some people like mentioning that like, oh, this is so predictable. And I'm like, why is that a bad thing? Like that's no. not necessarily a bad thing for me. Like, sure, I love a good twist, but I felt like we, you know, had some of those, but then it's also like nice to have something that feels familiar. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it was, I, I feel like as a fantasy reader, one of, I don't know if anyone else figured this out, one of the first things I said, and I called, like, I think I called Avery immediately, I was like, the brother's alive. And she's like, what? And I was like, brother's alive. Just letting you know, he's alive. I'm going to be shocked if he's actually dead. And she's like. Yeah, and then like an hour later, I was like, the brother's alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it, I figured it out, I want to say like within the first three chapters. Did anyone else or was everyone like, nah. Well, it was it very much like a, yeah, definitely, probably, but like, yeah, until it was confirmed, I was still very much like, I don't know, but mm -hmm. she should play it this way. And then she did. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah um, I felt the same way. Good. Yeah. Um, how about the dragons? Did anyone guess that she was going to end up with the black dragon or the gold dragon? I guessed the black <laughs> and then I guessed the gold, but I did not guess both. I didn't guess both. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I didn't guess that. 
when they first presented like the different types of dragons in the class and I was like if she doesn't end up with a black dragon and then we saw her interact with a gold dragon and I was like but the cover is gold what's gonna happen and then my brain went to um went to the witcher which if anyone's seen I guess it's, I don't, was it the first season yeah there's a thing with a gold dragon that like is human but also a dragon and oh then I was God, like I what if the that. gold dragon is the black dragon and it's trying to like fake out people <laughs> Like, oh I was so gosh. far-fetched. It was so funny, but no, I did not guess. <laughs> I just remember <laughs> being, thinking so, like, I loved the black dragon. I was like, oh, she's got to be, because the second Jack mentions that, you know, and you're yes. like, oh, that's yes. going to be her dragon. Yes. Like, of course. And then when the golden dragon, when Andarna was mentioned, it was like, oh, I was kind of bummed because I was like, oh, it's so cute, but like, it's so tiny. Like, is she going to yes. be able to, like, I want her to have the black dragon. <laughs> yes. Yes. So I was so excited. I was um I was live on TikTok when I read because I knew I was getting close to when she was picking her dragon. Everyone's like, what do you final answers? And I couldn't decide. I was like, there's a gold dragon and there's but she needs the big black one for the same reason that Ashley said. Like <laughs> Cammy's like, that's, that's what, what she, she said. said. I was <laughs> <laughs> both on the cover. Like you go back and you flip right. to the cover and they're both there and you're like, oh. I know. And people in the comments are saying the cover. Never ever noticed it until after I finished the book. Yeah. <laughs> I will say that specific scene though, when she was with Andarna and then mm -hmm. Taryn came down and I don't think I was the only one in this group that thought that it was giving the, it was giving as and Cassian landing on the ice. I was yes. like, He's here! Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it felt very much like me to, it, it felt to me like, um, how to train your dragon. It felt like when they're in, I don't know if, why I was picturing this, but I was it was easier for me to put How to Train Your Dragon in this book than it was for, um, uh, oh, yeah, they're on the cover. See, look, um, oh. she's showing it. One, gold in the middle. And then black, black up here. <laughs> yeah. Um, Literally, they're on the cover. <laughs> they're on the cover. Um, the scene in How to Train Your Dragon when he sees Toothless for the first time, it is kind of in this, like, forest where it's, like, cleared in a big circle. That is how I imagined, like, him coming in and little Goldie was in the center. So um, it was... But God, it was a good, it was a good little scene. So good. I loved how fast paced this book was. Yes. Like, yeah. I, when you start a fantasy book, usually there's that like lull. Yes. At the beginning, this like you have to get through the world building, and no, no, no. You start chapter one. We're on the parapet. Like we're on the first task. We're we're in it. People are dying. We're going through it, and you didn't want to stop. And I loved mm -hmm. that there were just like no lulls in the entire book no and i i, mm -hmm. I would agree i actually i remember reading the first chapter and thinking is this gonna end like is this chapter gonna end because it was so long but i i understand why now she wanted to kind of to your point cammy she wanted to just have us dive right in um <laughs> i don't know if anyone else guessed it i wish i recorded i called avery and i said because we were reading at the same time and the guy I already forgot his name but the one who had like the wedding ring and he's like I'm so excited like blah blah I was like he gonna die he gonna die he's not gonna make it and then five seconds later I was like oh yeah. and I think I audibly laughed and I probably shouldn't have because I just knew that was not gonna happen well and like speaking of that this is probably one of the first books I've read since reading Game of Thrones where I genuinely felt like no one was safe I was like it could be anybody uh, yeah. anybody can die like, I, I feel like Violet and, and Zayden are good for, like, now, but, like, everybody else was a shot in the dark. I was like... Did, which did any appreciate. surprise you? Did what? Did, did any like, of the deaths surprise you? Yes. Like, like yeah, Ara I mean, Lee surprised. Like, it was kind of like, yeah. are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, that just happened? Like, that was... That was that it, one was tough. I, I mean, I think that the the very last one was not necessarily shocking, but it was the it was just the one that hit me. The crying. Yeah. The, yeah. Liam, Liam killed me. The yeah. was it hmm. was I forget her name. So Ashley, it might have been the one you just mentioned. But the the one where she the the leader who they her dragon had to like. Oh, that's Amber. Amber's death. Uh, jaw <laughs> on the floor. I was like, honestly. Like that death oh, shocked me. Absolutely honestly, shocked we me. love Zayden just a hundred percent believing her and fully just like what a man. I was mm -hmm. like, <laughs> it was so good, but God was my oh, mouth then, was on the floor. Then, I well, I loved the moment with Taryn and that too mm -hmm. because like her mm -hmm. dragon was there and Taryn yes. and her dragon was like yeah. gonna like argue it and he was like, "Bitch, sit down." Yes. Like, <laughs> yes. I was like okay. 
it's I already I will say and I'm sure most of us here felt this way, but the which I haven't seen this talked a lot about on TikTok, but um obviously the series is not called Fourth Wing and it is I how do you say it? It's Empyrean. Empyrean, yeah. which was what they called the dragon council that they all went to at one point to decide if she was allowed to keep the two dragons. And I immediately was like, I want to know what's going on in this conversation. Hmm? And I feel really left out. And this is rude. <laughs> like, I just, <laughs> immediately was like, this is disrespectful. Like, I need to know. I feel getting FOMO from hearing these dragons huff about this. So um, it is. Oh, and then they want to. Okay, hold on. Do we want to talk about Dane? Do we just want to get it out of the way? I mean, I already brought him up. <laughs> um, listen, we're talking about that Amber's death scene. Like, that is the moment where, like, he officially went from, like, maybe just a little too touchy-feely friend, whatever, grew up with, childhood friend, whatever, to, I'm sorry, absolutely not. Like, no. I it was the fact that he didn't believe her. Like yeah, he didn't, didn't and like her, it, and, and his, then he was going to touch her without permission. Well, yeah, right. It was the righteousness yeah. that he felt in like, oh, I can just touch you, and she was like, excuse. And Except like, he has obviously been. He had, he had kissed her before that, and that bothered me. But like this one was the one that like was like the straw that broke the camel's back for me. I was done. Someone mentioned it in the realm, and I'm sure Kate, you noticed it. The amount of times he touches her forehead. Kate has the okay. count. She has the yeah, number. So on my reread, I counted. So, and also, so I did face touching counting and then I did non face touching because how slimy would it be to tell people you have to touch their face, but actually you could just touch them anywhere. So I, I did thing. counts for both. Um, he touched her face nine times, not including the kiss. Um, and he touched her anywhere else but her face 24 times. And I have page numbers. One of these days I'm going to make a TikTok about it. So if you want to reference the page numbers. So um, but yeah, my question is and the, fir the first time was right after the parapet when she hurt her knee. He was right. like, oh, are you hurt anywhere else? Are you hurt anywhere else? And immediately like that was like within their first conversation. He touched. Her. Did he touch well, her shortly after she saw everyone in the forest? Are yeah. you serious? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it was. Yeah, it was like, but, like a day or two later. It was but like that's my question because it says in his, because I started my reread and it said um, that his power only works like recent memory. So like how, but we don't know like how recent. So like how far back can he? But is that also just another be? lie? No, I don't. I mean, I don't think not, so. Not everything so. can be a lie, right? I don't, I don't think but, so. I think. I, I, I like also him. I also Every, think he's a lying liar. I think I also think that Zayden probably knows more about his power that because he's older. So he would know more than he leads. So I think if anyone right. would really know the truth about it, that would actually tell us it's going to be him. And that's why I don't think everything he was saying was a lie. I think some of it definitely was, yeah. but not everything, you know. But also well, I Zayden feel like did say like he did he touch you like this. So it's very possible it was just face. But Still. But also, like, they get more powerful the more time that they spend, like, right. with the dragon. So his power could have been growing or could be continuing to grow that we don't, and we just don't know. The, um, I also saw someone say this, and I'm just going to say this once. Um, someone compared Dane to Kale. I'm going to get on my soapbox no. for a okay. quick second and say, and say that Dane is not Kale. And this is why. <sighs> Kale may be an idiot. He just may. He actually is most of the time. However, Dane is manipulative in a way that Kale would never be. Like Kale's loyalty at, at Kale's core, Kale Westfall's core is that he is still a loyal, like honorable male. Like he just is. Dane, his loyalty lies elsewhere. Like it's essentially if Kale was more loyal to the to the King of Otterland than he led everyone to believe. Kale was never loyal to the King of Otterland. He was always loyal to his friend Dorian and to his morals. Dane has no morals because he's going around and touching a girl's face that he's known for years because he thinks she's lying. And then he's telling everyone and then putting her in a dangerous situation where she almost died. So I am just going to quickly say that there are, I just, there's no comparison there. Um, it's the same thing when people compare Kale to Tamlin. I'm like, Kale's more comparable to Lucian, and you just have to get over that because that's just the truth of it. Um, uh, no, he's not Kale, he's Gale. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Gale's, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
don't do Gail like that. But it's true. Oh, wait, it's, it's true. true. He's coming back no. from that final action. <laughs> he's There's not no as bad. Back. But. He's just, Gale wasn't always that manipulative. Everybody no, went through no, trauma. No, he wasn't. He wasn't. But I think not until the end. Not until the end. Okay, I fair. Said, and everybody had been through so much. Okay, we'll just trauma. call him third act Gale. How's that? Yeah. Okay. But, yeah. So I don't know about you guys. I know, like, I did not like him from the beginning, though. Like I wanted the very to first like scene him. with oh, Dave, I did. He was like, "Oh, we got to get you out. We got to get you out." And I was like, "You don't believe in her." I'm, really? I'm sorry. I just need to interject here. Somebody said, don't defend the Prim Reaper, and I <laughs> can't. <laughs> That's amazing. I never... <laughs> That's amazing. Oh my I'm God. so sorry, Kim. We have to move past that oh because he protected her for so long. Okay, anyway. <laughs> One of my I, so what like one of my proudest moments was that I immediately text you guys and was like, "Oh, he said he had Jedi mind powers and he's taking every single chance he can to touch yeah. her." Oh yeah, Cammy's text us. I was we like, were literally, <laughs> we were texting them like, "Y'all, Cammy's really smart. She's really <laughs> figured it out." Like it was, it, it was really funny. The text messages that <laughs> were coming through. Um, yeah, no. No. Okay. Uh, last few thoughts before I start doing some Slido questions. Anything you guys want to bring up? Oh, one thing I do want to bring up because we were just talking about Dane and his BS about, oh, you know, you probably should go back to this because you're weak. The chronic illness thing and something that I think was really, really yeah. important to Rebecca Yaros and something that I think a lot of us really appreciated in the story was that she wasn't this like super strong, buff, badass female. She... While she was, she has, you know, a chronic illness that requires her to think a little outside of her box, but it doesn't mean she's weak. It doesn't mean she's, you know, you just, there's so many different adjectives. I think weak is probably the biggest one is the one that I'm thinking of, but it just means that she has strength in other areas and that's why she deserves a dragon, like mm -hmm. the dragons she got. So I think it's, yeah. it's one of the best parts about the story. I think we all also agree that it was so beautifully written in that the magic didn't fix her. Yeah. 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 I actually fixed. <clears throat> there's actually a quote that um, I love that was after she got the saddle um, that Taryn said to her, you have worked just as hard, if not harder than every writer in this quadrant, just because your body is built differently than others doesn't mean you don't deserve to keep your seat. And I thought that was really beautiful. And I, I think it also was good because it showed like Zayden seeing her and seeing like what she was good at and building her up as well as showing mm -hmm. like the people who are close to her, not just Dane, but also her sister, um, feeling like they're protecting her and doing what's best in reality or like holding her back, which I think is something mm -hmm. that a lot of people I think in general, face. the humans... I felt like going through the story, the human's way of thinking of the dragons were that you had to be this like extremely tough, very fit person to even be worthy of a dragon. And it was clear from the dragon's point of view, you are, yes, you have to be tough and strong, but not in the same way that the humans believe in it. And I think that is what yeah. was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And his belief in her too, like when he would pick her up when she fell and he's like, He's like, I believe that you are the right choice for me. Like, I like that was just so beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it was funny. At one, I mean, I'm just very short. And so at one point when she like first got him and she <laughs> he was like, OK, you have to get off me. I had the same fear she did. I was like, how is she going to get off this? Because like I would have just panicked and probably tumbled off of the dragon because he's just so massive. But it was just really cute to see like he even accommodated her, like, you know, getting off the dragon like he. He, it, they're a team work, you know, they're a team. So they're, he, they're working together to decide how this is going to work. And I thought that was mm -hmm. really cool. Yeah. So. Hey, I think you also want to talk about Anne Darna. Am I correct? In general? Well, well I mean, about I, what I, she, about her now. Well, I, I know it's in Slido too. I don't know that I have an opinion on it or an idea, but I was wondering what you guys think, what color she might become and what tail she might have. Because obviously she was gold and now she's getting bigger. I'm pretty sure on my reread, I saw that she wouldn't be full grown until for like another three years. Yeah. So I don't know if she has, I don't think she's changed color yet, but. Baden was very much like, she's big. Yeah. He said she's bigger now. So I don't know. Can she not stay gold? Did I miss that part? 
I don't think so. There's there like orange, green, color. blue, black, brown, brown. I think it's just the babies are gold. Yeah, all the babies are gold. So I don't know. I feel yeah. I feel like she's either going to be black or blue or maybe green. Yeah, based green is the more like docile. Based off of, and maybe I'm just like maybe this doesn't make any logical sense, but based off of the fact that the two dragons that are taking care of her from a surrogate standpoint are black and blue, maybe she falls under that category just because they would be the ones that would naturally know how to deal with that. But I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if she was another color. Yeah. Did any of you want her to be like Taryn and Seagal's? Yes. (laughs) Yes, I think that one. I thought that that so badly. So funny when Taryn was, or was it Seagal that was like, "You really think we would hide that from you?" (laughs) I was like, "That is so funny." That I'm really excited to see more of the banter between Seagal because I think I'm assuming we're going to get more of Zayden's point of view in the next book since the last chapter wasn't his. Thank God. Yeah, and so I think it's just it adds a different layer to see. Because I think what's interesting about Violet's relationship with her dragons is it's, it's new and fresh. And so for us readers, it's kind of giving us a chance to be like, uh, what would we do if we had a dragon in our minds? But it's cool to see on the opposite end, like Zayden and Seagal are so tight and they're so close and they have such a great relationship that you can kind of see that banter in a different way. So I'm hoping we kind of see the difference in the dragon relationships. Mm -hmm. Um, So in terms of like her growing in the next book, I'm kind of hoping to see like a really funny teenage version of her kind of like when Groot's a teenager and it's like yes so funny but it also like I know we talked about this when we first read it like it makes me nervous that she has two dragons and that leaves room for death I hope hopefully that doesn't happen but I also could see like it was mentioned in this book that they wanted to study her so I'm worried that like in the next book if she's grown a little bit and if they're around at all like she could get captured and Mm -hmm. it could be like a whole thing that that I'm really worried about. Yeah. Well, and I think there's a lot of, well, I'll save it for a little bit later because we had some, I, right before we started, Kate had a great theory about Brennan, but I think also that leaves a very interesting point about, is his dragon there? Is he Yeah, I don't know where it is. is. Yeah, they don't, I don't know where his dragon is. Yeah, so. So, so actually someone's question in the slide I was scrolling through and basically they asked like, oh, do you think all the three siblings are going to make it? And I was like, three siblings? And then I thought about the folklore and in the same way that SJM has like the three sisters, three mountains, we have like whole series regarding that. It's interesting that the folklore is based on three brothers. One is bonded to a griffin, one is bonded to a dragon and one grew jealous and ended up pulling power from, you know, the earth and became Venon. So it was like, where is Brennan's dragon or are we going to have some sort of like mirror to the that folklore? I mean, it's like not, I literally, this was like one minute before <laughs> the yeah. live started. So I don't actually know, but maybe. Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and, and and read some of these questions in Slido. Um, for those of you that want to submit questions or discussion points, it's slido.com. And then our code tonight is Violet. So it makes it a little easy. Okay. So it says, uh, right as Violet was getting on the parapet, uh, the storm and rain picked up uh, way worse. As soon as she got off, it died back down. Her mom's signet is storm. So what do we all think about that? I have thoughts and opinions, but I don't have enough information. Yeah, I, well, this is the thing. Well, okay, here's a question. Do we think the mom is good or bad That in the most basic terms? I think she's gray. Yeah. I don't think she's bad. She has the dagger. She knows. She knows. She's aware that the venom are there, but I don't think she's... Evil. Yeah, I, I I think she is doing bad things, but what, f- but for what she thinks are the right reasons. I guess so it depends I- on yeah, what you consider bad is uh, for yeah. me is like, or even for Zayden and you know all of those kids. Like, she knows she's not doing anything, and in fact, she executed all of their parents in front of them in Mm-mm-mm. front of no, them for no. bad that's, there is a, no. that's wrong Avery. okay well she yeah. didn't she didn't do it herself it says that okay. she didn't she was against it she disagreed a, okay so this is my whole yeah. thing she earlier on she disagreed with that she said clear in writing i do not agree with executing yeah. the parents in front of the kids 
I also believe that she's the one who struck the deal with Satan because she thought that was the only way to help them. Yeah. She yeah. has the blade. Also, this. I'm pretty sure she was asking her daughter, who was supposed to be a scribe and was trained by her husband, who knew all this information. I'm pretty sure she basically placed her in the writer's quadrant so she could do something about it and knew that she had the knowledge to do something. Like, I... I really don't think she's, I think she was think in she, the government and then found out this information due to Brennan's death, which leads me to think like, I think their dad knew what happened to Brennan and that's why he became very like reclusive in the archives and then discovered this information. So I think she's like still fairly new to this information in the last, how long ago did Brennan supposedly die? Like it was only like two years or three five, yeah, like, or five years, okay, whatever. It's yeah. like not that long ago. Yeah. So this is that phrasing that she says, no, I am in direct disagreement with General Melgren's order. So it's Melgren that ordered the deaths. And she's like, I'm officially objecting to the plan set forth. It is not this general's opinion that the children of rebellions leaders should be forced to witness their parents' executions. No child should watch their parent put okay, to death. So I interpret that as not necessarily that she disagreed with the executions, but that she disagreed with making the children watch. Right. Mm. And the children were still forced to watch. Even if Mm -hmm. she's not the one who enforced that, they were still forced to watch their parents die for no reason. Because the reasoning was Brennan's death and he is alive. There there is some phrasing and I I I'll have to pull it up. Um in a second wait i'm like do they just <laughs> literally when i pulled up instagram it was uh red red tower um but in the first chapter in the very beginning when um her sister's there and they're arguing about her going into the writer's quadrant i found it well okay not gonna get into this however i have a suspicion about the autumn king being good so anytime i look at a parent that is like ob- obviously written in a way that is negative yeah, we've gone there i promise we'll explain later and they also can be a shit parent and yes. still be trying to do stuff yes. for the greater good they're definitely gray yes so it's not like i think yes. she i because well it, the autumn king's a bad example because i think he's crap but what i'm trying to say is whenever an author uses a parent and makes it makes them out to be so evil they want the reader to hate it hate them i kind of read a little too close because i'm trying to see if that's really the end result this is probably like jk rowling's fault with snape honestly like this is probably where this is coming from but there was a line that she said to her sister uh, that her mother said to her sister where it said out of all my children who could survive this it's violet and so i think do I agree with some of her methods with Violet? Absolutely not. But I think right. what happened was to everyone's, to Kate and Ashley's point, I think because her husband was a scribe, he figured things out. She already was in the government, fe- realized the actual truth. You know, the cracks are crumbling. Her son dies. I think she's aware he's alive, if I'm going to be honest. And I think she forced Violet in the writer's quadrant because she wanted her to have the option of having a magical dragon and not be stuck at the school, but have a way out. So I think she did all of this because the other thing I thought was weird was she had little to no reaction finding out that her daughter's dragon is bonded to Zayden's dragon, and which means she's now forced to be with a rebel son. Everyone else lost their mind, yet her mother acted like, whatever and not like she could do anything to change it it just was Mm -hmm. bizarre to me that there was little to no reaction well i think that is because she even though she treats her like shit i think she does know her daughter and she knew her daughter was really freaking smart and really cunning and Mm -hmm. that aligns with what black dragons are and i and i would agree i don't think her mother is a loving person i don't think she comes across as like you know this angel of a being i i I would agree with that. I, th- I still think, you know, I <laughs> I would not do well with that as my mother. Um, mm-hmm. But I think deep down, she's trying to find a way to rebel while still having information on the inside. Um, but she may not be fully convinced. I'm trying to see if I can find my highlights. So keep. I also think at some point, like her truth is going to come out and then she's definitely going to die in the series. Like she's not making it yeah. to the end. Like there's going to be some sort of like reconciliation or maybe she's going to get to see Brennan again or something. And then she's gone. Um, So these are the things like, these are some of the first things I highlighted. So like one of them said, dad wouldn't want this Mira argued her uh, color flushing up her neck. I loved your, and then her mother responds and said, I loved your father, but he's dead. Mom says, if giving the weather report, I doubt he wants much these days. That was another thing that I found very interesting was, was the juxtaposition of saying like, I loved him, 
but then being so cold about the delivery of it. So I was like, mm, that's sometimes a coping mechanism. Um, Nesta taught me that. Uh, then the next thing is the, like literally a page later, I said, it said Mira, Violet deals with more pain before lunch than you do in your entire week. If any of my children is capable of surviving the writer's quadrant, it's her. My eyebrows, uh, rise. Uh, that sounded an awful lot like a compliment, but with my mom, I'm never quite sure. That was the, I remember reading that and being like, oh, keep an eye on this. Like it just, mm -hmm. so I don't know. I think. I think there's a few all options there with that one, but it it made me question. So, also based on what you just said, also do you, who who do you think caused Violet's father's death, or do you think it was you know was it an accident or did someone actually kill him? And if so, who do you think did it? I am not fully convinced he's dead. Didn't see him die on page. I don't know. I feel personally, I feel like, okay, they gave us Brennan. I feel like the dad probably yeah. is dead. And He's I think maybe, dead. maybe Dane's dad killed him. Like I maybe wonder, Dane's dad or Mel Grain. Or I do feel like Mel he Green. learned too much. Oh. Yeah. I feel yeah. Like someone found out he knew too much information. Well, and the only, is it, the, does he have the only copy of the fables or because they destroyed no, she, all of them. They're like, they can't find any the, of them. Well, Violet has the one copy. No, I know. But I mean, like, I did think, he have, like, did they know that I, he had? I think it's the only copy in this part of the world, but not, yeah. that's, I think yeah. they did destroy him. I think there's, we're going back to the dad. I think there's two options. One, he's not really dead. And I think they're trying to cover up his death because he's somehow doing like more in-depth research. So they needed to kind of in a way cover it up the second mm -hmm. thing which i think is the more tragic solution but i think might be what actually happened which is his mother or violet's mother to protect brennan had to lie to her husband that their son was dead and he really did die of a broken heart which broke her heart because she could never reveal that their son was really alive mm -hmm. I, I mean he died of a heart attack which easily could have been done with poison which i know there was lots of talk of poison and stuff so that's the other thing too yeah Okay, uh, the next question is, the real question is why the dragons are okay with the lies about the Griffin people. They know the truth, but the government lied. This is why I wonder about the general and his dragon. What's the deal there? Yeah. Well, I think he's Venom from the beginning. Like him yeah. and then the other, there's one other instructor that like hates Violet. I can't yes. remember his name, but whatever his name is. Um, and I think he was also the one that was like really upset that she got the two dragons and stuff. But I feel like, him and General Melgren are both like potential. The one that was helping her with her Tannen. signet, right? That Taryn, like Tandon, like he's like, so that means that you don't trust me either. That one. I can't remember yes. his name. Yes. I don't know if it's that one. Um, Cause the, not the instructor that like killed the student, not him, but there's a different instructor. That's like the one he's like the head of the school. The one thing that I'm really confused about, and maybe it will be explained more, but if the general is connected to a dragon that and he's venom how why is the dragon still bonded to him yeah i don't think we know the details of that mm -hmm. how that bond works but i also think that yeah. comes down to like do we fully like are all dragons good or not and i would say like considering a, dr a dragon was willing to bond jack like pro not all dragons are probably good but yeah. i don't know i think that's a, yeah. a detail question that we don't know yet but there was like literally a line where violet was like i wouldn't be surprised like if melgrin is a venom and like zayden said something after that and i literally put i was like this is 100 percent true he definitely is this <laughs> like, <laughs> well, no doubt and do we think do we think he's the big bad versus or like do we think there's like a, because the venom that that they fight like not to go down a rabbit hole but like the venom that she fights that like says i'm gonna take you back to my master basically do we think she would who do we think she was talking about i don't know it's it's this is where like my logic my non-fantasy logical brain comes in it's a five book series i don't think we've met the big bad yeah like i think melgren thinks he is yes right yes. <laughs> right <laughs> like i think i don't think the king is totally in charge i think he probably i think general melgren or whatever it's a throne like, of glass situation well and we've yeah. also got yeah. a whole new world to explore now yeah there's mm -hmm. bound to be somebody else bad out there yep yeah yeah but back to the, the question about why do the dragons not care about the griffin situation i think mm. in the same way that she said something about the gods and 
Taryn was like, we don't bother ourselves with your puny gods. Like they are so yes. like above mm -hmm. and they kind of know what's going on. Like they're not messing with politics. Like they're not, they don't give a shit about the border. Like I think the dragons know a bunch of stuff. And as our world expands, I'm sure we'll see those interactions. Like I think they don't, it's not that they don't care. It's just that they're seeing a bigger picture. And yeah. I mean, I think the best way to describe it, it's like th this book and I'm going to keep using Throne of Glass because it's it's the best example. But I feel like it's like Throne of Glass. If we were to base this entire like if we think about a book one of Throne of Glass, if this is all of us talking right now about book one and you were to be like, where do we think the book's going to go? And we would all be wrong. We would all be wrong. All right. of us, because that book series, by the time you got to book three, Air of Fire, you were like, yeah. I'm sorry, what, how how did we get here? Like this is, I mean, when you go back and you read it, you understand how the dots were connected. But mm -hmm. in the moment when you're just in the castle in Otterlin and you're just in this little world, you don't really think that way. And I think it's the exact same thing going on here. It's so hard to judge because I see there's a question in here about where do we think the series is going in five books? I mean, mm -hmm. Well, two things I want to say while we have everyone here. Number one, it's five books, so I'm not really going to guess. But I, based off of what the series is called, I think Kate is right. I think we are going to really dive into the, the mindset of these dragons. The second thing I would say, and I've seen this a lot on the book world, and I'm just going to say it. Whenever, when the sequel comes out and the next one comes out, like, don't be quick to judge it because we don't know where this series is going and we all mm -hmm. fell in love with fourth wing and we really need to be open-minded because I've seen so many times on book talk where people hype up a book so much then they get the second or third one and then they trash it because it wasn't what they imagined and it's like guys we have to let the author tell the story they want to tell and even though this sounds bad this is what I'm doing I'm getting iron flame and um, I am going in with lower expectations because number one, I know Rebecca's going to knock it out of the water. And number two, I want her to tell her story, not the story in my mind. So I mm. think I would challenge everyone to really think that way when they're going into the next few books with this series instead of having such a solid mindset because I think it can ruin a new series for a lot of people. So that is my quick spiel because... I can I could already see the writing on the wall and I'm like, no, I'm I'm sticking it out for five books. This was a good start. I'm I'm ready for this adventure. So wherever we go, I'm ready. <laughs> um on a fun question, uh the next one is favorite moment between Violet and Zayden. Anyone want to start? First kiss. Mm, that was a good one. When they're when their dragons are having spicy time. He was a consent king in that moment too. He yes, was like, he was. This is not like I think it's Ashley's least right favorite part because he's smoking. But yeah, I hate that. <laughs> I <honestly> <laughs> listen. The man needed that was, to take the edge off. That was like, a big cold it. shower for me. <laughs> that was a. Could we not have done an edible? Like that's that's what I kept thinking. Right. <laughs> like, just saying. Yeah, this is just throwing I mean, that out. There. It's the only time we see him smoking in the book, and it's because no. Taryn and Skull, however you say her name, are like literally like you can't. Right. Like I would smoke too, honestly. Like come on, if that There's was going so on in my brain, no, thank you. I'm good. I feel like the first one of my favorites is is when he uh, does the training, like on the mat before they or have any sort of like connection and he's like disarming her and she kind of has like a little, like, this is, I, this is too toxic. I can't like this person. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's like a little moment. It's the, every I love time that part. She does the little, the little, we don't like toxic men. By right. Her. Right. <laughs> she talks to like, oh, yes. Um, for me, well, no one's surprised. It's mortal peril. <laughs> Um, of course. It was, it was, but I think it's, I mean, while I love the ending moral part, cause I was like, Ooh, this is good. It's actually when everyone comes into her room and then he storms in oh, and, that and he loses so his good. mind. Mm, that, yeah, it's that the, did it for me. The, she was merciful to you on the field. That is not a fault I possess line for me. Is so that Listen, I read this once until 5 a.m. and I'm still recalling these. Y'all are the, welcome. This is oh yeah, he's just I didn't want I I didn't want to fall in love with him too quickly because I was like, what if what if she pulls a 180? Like I'm too used to falling for the bad boy and it is Dane. But I'm like, I'm gonna have to take cold medicine to get used to this one. So like 
please let it be Zayden because <laughs> this is the farther we got into the book, the more I was like, God, Rebecca, if you make me fall in love with Dane, I don't, this is going to be like, I'm going to need to take a shot every time because I can't handle this. So, um, but yeah, when, when that happened, I was like, okay, this is, this is where we're going. Can they have mates in this world? That's my next question. Cause if the dragons are mated, can the, the humans be can. mated? I'm just, just wondering a little bit. I think the dragons can. Not sure about the humans. I would like both. Okay. <laughs> Porque no los dos. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, anyone else? Favorite? Um, yeah. So sorry if you hear some banging. There's literally good. fireworks going oh, off fine. right outside my window. Um, but um, so I just like smaller moments. Of course, I loved the like fight scene where he was like taking the blades from her and stuff. But specifically, like, every, like, subtle moment where he was giving her gifts, like, the special daggers, mm -hmm. getting her, you know, help with having Liam and having Imogen and the saddle. And the first night after they slept together, the next morning, he left her spring violets. And I, I mentioned this before to you guys, but so I think his love language is gift giving, which oh. I think is not a common love language to see in our MMCs. I feel like yeah. a lot of times, yeah. especially like like Castile or Reese, it's like it's definitely physical touch. 100%. And it's a lot of times it's physical touch. And I love how like he gives her things that help improve her life or make her feel good. And it's like mm -hmm. it's so subtle. Like you don't necessarily always realize it's happening. But I love that. For Rowan, it's acts of service. Mm -hmm. Um, So. <laughs> Wait, Cammy, did you have one? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, Cammy. It is it is between the parapet moment, okay. the very Queen Charlotte, mm. do you love me yeah. moment. And then, okay, the moment where um, where she is training her lightning with Carr for the first time. And she's like, and Carr's like, well, imagine like the last time that you used your magic. And Tan's like, do you want to get the wing leader and then they have that conversation in their head <laughs> i wonder if like the <laughs> tart and seagal like when they when they got it on they were like up oh, high five we, <laughs> we did it <laughs> like like this is gonna be great <laughs> i think i messaged <laughs> i think i texted avery or facetimed her and i was like just curious so in the next book when the dragons get it on and then they get it on is that considered an orgy at this point i'm just wondering like <laughs> I was like, because we're leading up these to this. The, guys, these are the questions I get when I'm in the middle of trying to finish. I'm so sorry. At four o'clock in the morning. But it was a very important question. It's like, it's, it's like, not yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Because we already got, we I'm already got the Sarah, hint. That's not a phone call. <laughs> it wasn't, it was a phone call. It was, <laughs> it was a, so I'm just sitting here thinking that, you know, if we, if, if, if we're hinting that that is where this is going, I mean, this is like the joining. It's like written on the walls, people. So I'm like, don't say that. <laughs> it was. You Sarah know. does this. It's not just me reading. Half the time she does this and she's like getting ready or on her way to work because she is an hour behind me. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm like in a meeting and I'll just get a, did you think dragons are maybe having an orgy? And I'm like, I'm at work. <laughs> what are you doing to me right now? I don't know. I don't know. I was just thinking. I was just sometimes these are the it's things fine. that pop into my head. I don't know what to tell you. It's 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 a, it's a very serious you. question. It's one I would ask Rebecca 100%. I would just I, I would need to know the answer. <laughs> I have no shame. I literally told Raven Kennedy when I saw her at a Polycon, I was like I handed the book to her, or, or I think someone. I I didn't get to hand it to her. That's what it was. But I made. Sure. I got it for you. Yeah, yeah. you <laughs> made sure to tell her that I was like the carriage scene, because dang, that was who. Yeah, 10 no, out of she 10. literally she literally saw the carriage scene in another book and then went hold my beer. Mm-hmm. 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 Ashley was looking out. I couldn't remember if I gave it to you, Ashley, or if I gave it to. Um, someone else. So I was like, who did I give that book to? I mean, Ashley's at our table all day. So. <sighs> I know. God bless Ashley. Doing, doing, doing God's work at a Polycon. Writing, <laughs> writing a lot of exercise. Polycon, flying from California to Atlanta and then riding nine hours with me to a Polycon. Hey, yeah. And then working we had a good time in yes, that car ride. Rolling. Yeah. Yeah. 
There were a lot of hawks on my the way. Favorite, my favorite is still the tree there were. situation. Oh, the, there was the a tree. pole that was dressed as a tree and you couldn't get over the fact that I called that it was dressed as a tree. I'm sorry. This is a tangent. Anyways, it's okay. <laughs> By the way, someone did ask, and I'm just going to say this. I don't, none of us are going to a polygon. No. no. We aren't. We're going to Disney. Absolutely never, ever in my life like a little polygon. <laughs> I don't think. You're I don't going think, one year. Kate, Kate. I will probably, never go. I don't like crowds or waiting in lines. And I also don't collect books like I don't care about she does uh, yes I would okay. rather go on a small little retreat with like a handful of people like I would be so overwhelmed that is my absolute nightmare I'd rather use that money to go to Europe or something so I will never see y'all at a poly all polycon That's ever okay. <laughs> never ever <laughs> sorry <laughs> And so we're okay. instead we're going to the happiest place on earth seven days later so yeah we are. <laughs> that's what we're doing Different kind of crowd <laughs> oh, I've never I've never been to that one I've She's never, never been to Disney. To the this part. is this is like me coming home. This is like a homecoming, people. Yeah. Like you want to see me point out every memento mori tombstone in the haunted mansion. I know where all five of them are, and I will point them out I, to you and tell you that there is blood spattering on them all because I've taken photos of them. So I, listen, I know world like the back of my hand, but I have never been to land. Yeah, yeah. We also I've are- been to downtown Disney at land at midnight on New Year's Eve, and that's the only thing I've ever done. No, yeah, Cami, you and I, we can we're gonna be like, mm, yeah, mm-hmm, y'all are gonna have to mm-hmm, fix mm-hmm, this because mm-hmm. I was supposed to go to Disneyland for my thirtieth birthday, and then Sarah J. Mass threw a wrench in that. So now we're going for mine. <laughs> <laughs> but but now we're, we're going. We're going for Star Wars, and like we'll be there for Star Wars. And I if we plan this right, been... if we plan this right, we should also potentially be there for Ashley's. I've still never been. Yeah, mine's on the eighth. Galaxy's Edge. Yeah, if we plan it right, we might we might be able to do. It. She's yeah. never seen Are, either park. Either. I haven't seen the one in Disney. Oh, I haven't, I haven't seen it either. Uh, the last they're the time same. I went was they're basically June of the 2019. same. To any Disney, June of 2019. I'm so sorry. I go back to every time I go back to LA, I go to Disneyland. I haven't been to Disneyland since 2018. So I've been to Disney World three times since then. So I. In fact, I'm going in August when I go see Taylor Swift. Yes, girl. Good for you. I love that. So see, for Cami, this isn't a big, this is like homecoming (laughs) for us. Like it's it's not a big deal. No, this is going to be a big deal. For me oh, to go to Disneyland. Yeah. Like a big we, deal. We will make it a big deal. Oh, yeah. Don't worry. Don't worry. We'll talk about Disney. So we're going to Disneyland, anyway. not Disney World. Okay. Sorry. Back to fourth yeah, week. But we did want to say, because some people were asking us about a polycon, and I was like, I yeah, it was none of us happen. are going. None of we're us are going. Instead, choosing to spend our money to go no. to the happiest place. I we're lost going. the polycon lottery. Yeah. You, I didn't you, get tickets. Yeah. So, so. okay. Uh, someone said, do you think mind reading, the mind reading signet is forbidden because it's truly too overwhelming or is it because the mind reading would expose the lies of the government? Exposing. The government. Yeah. Exposing the government. That's the only reason they keep uh, Dane alive is because he can be controlled and they mm-hmm. can manage what yep. he's doing. But. Yep. Hate it here. Um, okay. Favorite side character and why? Not including the dragons. Rhiannon. Yeah. Liam. Yeah. I love Liam. I love Liam. Don't get me wrong. But Rhiannon was my girl yeah. from like the moment she showed up on page. I'm not surprised. Rhi- for you. Rhi- Their friendship a little bit more dynamic, dynamic. But I do love Liam too. But Liam, Liam had to be more dynamic because he's not here anymore. What was I'm blanking on his name? So forgive me. But Zayden's friend, Garrick. Yeah. Like Garrick. A second. His cousin. Is it Eric. his cousin? The no. hottie, the one that Imogen likes. Yeah, right. Him. <laughs> him. My, that was another that one, one of my favorite little moments. His, his was... cousin is Rydock? Rydock? Mm-hmm. Is that right? No. It's... I don't know. I don't know. Anyways. Don't, don't that, quote that, us. <laughs> that was another one of my favorite moments. We'd like a character was... list. We'll Violet make one. Being... We'll make a character list. Okay. So what, that was another one of my favorite moments was Violet being jealous and him mm-hmm. being like, look at, think about what you just said. I yeah. was fighting Garrick on the map. Like, think about it. And then she like processed and was like, she likes Garrick. And he was like, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Garrick, I I just, he's he said a few things pretty much, when, okay. pretty much when Liam died. First off, I was shocked that Liam died. Like, I will be honest. Yeah. I, was, I was shocked. And I psyched us out with that first time. Yeah. I, I know. So I, I was. I think I was, when he died, I was like, okay, it's time to find another one. So I was like, Garrick. <laughs> like, okay. I was I was really hoping Ashley was awake because it was like 4 a.m. my time. So it was like 1 a.m. No. 
when when I was reading it and she was not awake and then she texted me back the next morning I was like I just saw this are you okay and I was like no I was sobbing by yeah. myself. Oh, it was yeah, so I, sad. I definitely cried. I cried. Um, okay, someone asked, are the good the good and the bad wait, are there good and bad dragons since they choose their writers? Because the dragon's choice because it wait, sorry, because a dragon's choice vies mom and we all know she's a terrible person. Oh, I don't think she is. I think we all well, three of us. Yeah, we had a long-winded explanation. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, we I don't love yeah. her. She's going to have to do a lot of convincing. We have four more books. For me to believe think, that it was a Snape situation. Like, even if she did good and she's trying to fix up, I don't think she'll ever be fully 100%. Forgiven. I agree. But yeah. that's, it's bad for me right now. Me, okay. me, no likey. That's Mom, fair. me, no likey. That's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Um... I always say I don't want us all to agree because that's boring. So yeah. <laughs> we, need, we need some some diversity in this group. Okay. Do you think there's a reason why the Sor Sor how do you say that? Soren Soren Gale. Soren Gale. Soren Gale. Soren Gale bloodline mm -hmm. has a powerful signet. Do we think there's a reason? I mean, I'm sure Maybe. it could stem from the original like three brothers and all the folklore, but also I I think it just depends on the personality and it also depends on the dragon right i yeah. think doesn't it matter more about the dragon than the person yeah. didn't they say that mm -hmm. yeah um does so this is interesting it says do you think liam is coming back or do you think the venom will use a scary resurrection magic on his dragon that don't, sounds very game of thrones no <laughs> he's he's done so i, I think, I think they're done. both done I'm he's really done sad about it. they have no reason to resurrect I him agree. also i don't fully believe that whole scene about Brennan. So I don't know that we can agree. I mean, it seemed like at least when we saw the Venom, they were very much the power of like death. I don't see how they would have yeah. the opposite power. Um, if anyone's still alive, in my opinion, it would be Jack because we didn't see the body. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, okay. So uh, do we think that, uh, was it Nyolin? Is that how you say the dragon's name? Naolin. 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 That's, that's, Naolin. that's the original guy. Writer. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, was successful in saving Brennan, seeing that he's alive, and in turn is now Venom since he used too much power. Does anyone... I, I do think that's a possibility. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I don't... Because when I mean, Violet mentioned him later, like when in the final scenes when Violet's using too much power, he was like, he mentions Naolin like burning out, but he doesn't say died. Yeah. So that's what I wondered. Like, but then it questioned, like, I'm like, if he became Venon and that's why Terrence no longer is dragon, then I'm like, well, then Mel Melgren can't be Venon. You know what I mean? Like, we don't know right. the details of like yeah. those rules. But um, okay. We but I do think that Naolin and Brennan were together, personally. I think they were. Yeah. Um, okay. We talked a little bit level. about the five books, but does anyone have a plot point that they think is going to happen in the five book in, over the next five books? Or are we all kind of just letting the story unfold a little bit? I'm letting it go. I, I, mean, I think Liam's sister. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Liam's sister. That's what I was going to say. I'm really excited about that, but I'm yeah. curious how, like, again, keeping very open-minded, like, how is she going to get back to school? Like, with what all that she knows and that they expect that they're dead? Like, how how is all of that going to I don't know out? if she will. Yeah. Yeah. That's the question. Like, yeah. It does like, feel very, like, Harry Potter. Like, uh, all of this is going on and they're just going to go back to school. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. So that, so. yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, like, Melgren's, Black Dragon at some point is going to fight Tarn. Like, I think that's going to happen. And Tarn is yeah. going to become, like, the top alpha or whatever of all the dragons. Or um, I think that, too, actually. Something else. Yeah. Somebody said Violet will forgive Zayden. I feel like that's almost a given. But that's going to happen oh, in yeah. the next book. I think. Because they have to forgive each other. And then they'll be separated at some point. Yeah. Obviously. Or I kind of hope that because... Um, we we did kind of talk. I forget there was a, at one point we had a discussion in Discord about Zayden and Brennan's age gap and like how they would have communicated. And they're they're both old enough to where Brennan would still somewhat be you know much older than Zayden, but they're they would always be somewhat close in age in terms of like their relationship, I guess. Um, but I do somewhat hope that Brennan reveals that he was the one that made Zayden, like he outranks Zayden in this rebellion, essentially, even though Zayden holds a significant role since he's 
probably the like essentially the lord of this area like he would be the highest ranking but since brendan is older and has a little bit more experience i bet he outranks him in the rebellion situation and i hope that's clarified to violet so she doesn't blame zayden she can understand that right. some of the blame is on brendan so sorry that was a very complicated way do we think that. do we think that maybe they're gonna try and convince everybody that violet's dead yes Mm. because it will save everyone else like why would in my i was thinking about that when we when one of you guys mentioned the school because mm -hmm. if they say she's alive how do they explain everyone else no one else can go right. back to the school that was a whole rebellion group yeah so the problem is convincing mira yeah yeah mira might be determined enough to try to find her right which then and could lead knows. into the three brothers thing. Like she could be so upset mm -hmm. over losing both of her siblings that she goes down a dark path. Oh, I hope not. I, I, I do too, because I love too. her. I love her. She saw the the wyverns or wyverns, however you prefer to say it, uh, but thought they were dragons, right? Yes. I think they were like off in the distance. So she just like saw Yeah, them so she couldn't tell or whatever. Yeah. 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 But that did make me think that like she doesn't know. She doesn't. Well, she I don't think she knows. She's very judgmental of Zayden. Like she was like looking yeah. at his tattoo and stuff. So, yeah, I know. I would. I would agree with that. Um, okay, uh, I'm gonna skip around because we're kind of no more super higher ranking questions. So I'm gonna skip around. So um, we talked a little bit about the deaths that shocked us. So we can go that. Um, someone said, "Do we think Violet's gonna get her gold nightgown moment?" I think she's God, already. Please. I think she's kind of had it, but yeah, I would say I think she's gonna give me more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's gonna be some more great spice. I will say this is one of those. They books. destroyed a bedroom. This is that, one... I was cracking up <laughs> and didn't use the bed. I didn't right. use the bed. But I will say he helped I'm... clean it up the next day. So. I I does. think Book Talk did a really good job. I mean, now it's the secret's kind of out, and maybe we read it so early that it we weren't ruined. I didn't know there was going to be spice in this and was very pleasantly surprised because it didn't overpower the book. It just made sense for the story. I felt like, whereas I feel like sometimes it's like a, a scale that can teeter one way or another, but this one felt like it was YA in a way that fantasy still held a very prominent role. Not to say there's anything wrong with it tipping the scale, but I enjoyed that it, it held a very interesting role in the story. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, oh, did someone ask, did you all take the dragon quiz? Which dragons did you get? Did you guys all take I it? Forget. I took it. I can remember. We all took it. I have to find my answer. I got to find my answer. I, I will tell. Did you take it, Cammy? I did. What did you get? I was like really I close. To green and black, black. But green ended up on top. I might be able to find it in my archive. I put it on my story. I, I usually just go to my highlights and try to add it because I know it was on my story. It cracked me up when we took these quizzes because they were so close to our actual personalities. Like <laughs> the phrasing. I got brown. Probably surprised. Like when you read the description, you're like, yeah, Sarah. Yeah, that makes sense. So it. Oh, I got green, which is intellectual, honorable, and cautious. I think you and I had. Which I'm also a Ravenclaw. So that makes sense. I think Kate and I had the same. Hold on. I'm yeah, I think we it. did. And Ashley surprised me. Ashley, what were you? I was black. Yeah, you were black cunning. Dragon. But I thought you and I were going to be the same because yeah, like we we're the same in a lot INTJ, of yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're both INTJs, which is like one and a half percent of women. Very and the most I'm an INFJ, <laughs> ENFJ. I flip flop on the I or the E, depending. I'm on an that. INFJ. Does someone um, actually? I go back between IN and IS. Do one of you guys have a link to it in case anyone else wants to take it? Actually, we might have put it. Um, yeah, I think it was in the it. chat. I, I can grab it. Okay. Um, in case anyone I'm else wants so to take happy. it or see the results. Um, it was or... cute too. Like cute. You what get like a cute little this? crest. I stuff. will copy the link and paste it in the YouTube. Perfect. Chat. Yeah. I could swear. I'm still I getting. I think you were green. I feel like I was green. I think you were green. Green blue? makes the most sense. Me. Um. Yeah. You so... and I were the same. I, I think I was green. All I there know, I am. Haha. -ha. I was green. <laughs> all I know is um I don't know my letters, but I know I'm a campaigner. That's like the phrases. That's all I know. Mm. I'm, I'm the entertainer. Yeah, not surprised with that at not all. Not surprised. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm the entertainer. I'm an Enneagram seven. Um seven wing six. 
Okay, so, so kind of leads into, Ashley, I think you said this, and I think the group either chose to ignore you or didn't hear you, but I was like, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So what? Uh, either Taryn or Seagal has to die so that oh. Violet or Zayden can be captured and they can be separated in a moment of angst. Do we think one of those dragons is going to die? Even Goldie. Let's just put all three of them in the mix. Ow. If Some anyone's going to die, it's Andarna. So someone is going to die. Like, them. there's no way that all three dragons make it to the end. I don't I think. I don't like that. I mean, I hate that, but like, but then I don't how do like I feel that. like out how to survive? But what because happened? she's bonded to two, like what, she can just whatever happened to Brennan might answer that question for sure. But mm -hmm. like, wow, yeah. Um, okay, not so us. Yeah. Not there being a way to save Liam, but it is too late. That Ow. makes my heart. Yeah. Yeah. Ow. That's just brutal. <laughs> Um, let's see here. Uh, okay. I'm just, I'm just reading some of these. Um, do we think that Rhiannon is going to make it to the end? I hope so, but I, I hope so. Think so. I think she's going to be a brutal one later on in the series. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I don't think she's. I think we got to figure, I think Violet has to figure out where Rhiannon's loyalties lie and if Rhiannon is loyal to Violet or if she's loyal to the war college or how that's going to work. Because Rhiannon, Rhiannon, Rhiannon point, didn't right? go, obviously, to the, to the rebellion. So she is, she is. But, sent. Yeah, but she wasn't invited. Yeah. I don't know. Didn't they help her go see her family and stuff, though, too? So I sort yeah, of feel I mean, like there's like that. There's already there's a, a dynamic of like. There's a dynamic that makes me think she's going to be loyal to Violet. Like, yeah. but it's yeah. just, we need to, we need that answer. Um, okay. I'm just going through some of these questions and seeing, okay. We talked about that one. Um, okay. We talked about that one. We actually talked about a lot of these. So that this is good. Uh, nice. Someone said, what do you think happened at Violet's birth? I feel like it wasn't a fever. Maybe she died and was re res and was resurrected. What if that's why Taryn's writer died? Because didn't Violet, she, there was mention of her birth, right? So the, what it said in the book was that her hair was a weird color because her mother had a fever during her pregnancy or something. Like she got ill during her pregnancy. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's the true thing. I'm sure it's going to mean something later, but I don't think we have enough information. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, we talked about favorite characters. We talked about the dragon colors. Uh, someone said, am I the only one who feels like the romance was a bit rushed? I don't want to get bored off, bored of the romance in the <laughs> upcoming books, like from Blood and Ash. It's a five book series. I didn't feel like it was rushed because I feel like, I'm, I'm just going to speak for myself and I'll let you guys, but I feel like very similar to Crescent City and very similar to other books I've read where the romance played an important role in the first few books it's setting up the fact that that is not the point of the series and that we need to move on from that to get to the actual point mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I also I mean it they didn't actually get together till like 80 percent and that was like all like a, almost a year in like they didn't get together till almost the end of the year so it was a whole yeah. good amount of time mm -hmm. so yeah um does anyone think that Dane can be redeemed That's no. a question. Oh, absolutely no. not <laughs> no okay i think he might try mm -hmm. no. i'm going with i'm going with a solid maybe and i i'm gonna need to see a like a lot no. a lot like i just i i'm going with a maybe because i don't know i just, there's a lot of ick i feel like we've already seen him choose the rules yeah. over yeah. everything else like, too many times at this point you know I, just, I mean I I want to leave room for character growth because there are four more books but like as of right now no but over the next four books maybe I think Kate, I, mean, I think you're the only one that read it um Savage Lands I forget that guy's name that was in it. it oh fudge okay do you know who I'm talking like the the first love interest in Savage Lands he was very I forget his name but the Hayden? reason I yeah, yes. I bring him up because he reminded me, like, Dane reminded me a lot of him, except Dane's a little mm -hmm. more manipulative, because he really, really stuck to the rules, and it 
it was the downfall of that character. But then when he hit the pit in that series, he cha- he changed on a dime. And I didn't think I would like that character. And I kind of started to towards, I didn't finish the mm-hmm. series, I'll be honest. But um, that's okay. Yeah, that's, mm-hmm. um, but I will say he, Dane makes me think we might get a similar arc in that way. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. It's just a hmm. random thought. Um, okay, we talked about this. Um, uh, favorite Liam moment. Wow, talk about hurting all of our souls. Anyone <sighs> have a favorite Liam moment? With the with yeah, the um, scribe. Yes. To oh, the scribe. So cute. I they would have made such a cute couple. Have you seen that? The fan art. We'll have to find the fan art to post in there, but someone drew a fan art of that scene with him talking to the scribe and it's the cutest thing ever. And I sobbed. I was like, why, why are you doing this to me? I haven't seen that. No. Um, I think apart from that, my favorite Liam moment is, um, um, when he chooses to go to the, it's not a ball, but you know what I mean? The thing that she didn't want to go to the party Mm -hmm. thing that she didn't want to go to. And he chooses to go with her. I loved that. And yep. then I also me him dying in her arms and saying, you know, everything that he said, like that is not my favorite, but it is a, it is a, it's a near and dear. Yeah. But him. also like the fact that he was always like carving all of the little cute dragons. Like, yes. Oh, that's all she has to remember. him. Like and I just, he finished and Darna. So sad. It is. Yeah. Um, speaking of another death, does anyone wish that Jax's death was more brutal? Of course, always. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why did <he> Charlie die? <laughs> it was a little too easy. So maybe he is still alive and we'll get another life. God, let's I hope not. not. When she doesn't feel Can remind me it. how he died? So she shot, she was so that was the frustrated. Lightning. She shot that the, was lightning, the lightning, went that into was the, the lightning the top okay. of the cool. thing. And yeah, then the no, rubble I want to know. Quote, I mean, it's, no one could survive that rubble falling. Is it didn't see his body. pretty, is a pretty badass display of power? I'm not going to lie. So like, yeah, that's cool. But like, yeah, no, he should have suffered longer because he's in. Did hospital. anyone catch her lightning in the first kiss? Because when he mentioned that later, I went back and checked and mm. she did actually produce lightning during their first kiss. Oh, really? I yep. didn't notice it page, until you brought it up. I didn't okay, notice it the first time. It's mm-hmm. like when they're mid kissing, she says, a flash of light burns behind my closed eyes, followed by a boom of thunder. Thunder snow isn't uncommon around here, but damn, does it summarize how this feels wild and out of control. Page 279, their first kiss. So I think that was so cool when he was like, oh, I thought so. Like, bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, okay. Uh Okay, we, oh, this is interesting. Do we think that Violet and Zayden will be back together before the end of book two, or do you think it will be longer? Book two. Book no, two. they can't keep them. That's... They can't drag it out. Yeah. They might get separated, but I don't yeah. think, yeah. I think they'll be together. together, and then they'll get separated at the end of book two. That yep. seems on brand. Yeah. Um, also, they might be know. in a relationship, but maybe not together. Oh. Sorry. I want also the five books. Is it going to be an Akatar situation where you get like, three and then you start doing other povs i want like i wonder we'll i don't see. know all she said was that it was plotted for five books she didn't specify who the main characters were yeah so mm-hmm. and the series is based off of the name of the dragon stuff so which makes me wonder like are the dragons actually going to be the main players and that way it's easier to switch between mm-hmm. the human povs yeah um okay do oh this is interesting um, do you think Dane is being blackmailed? No. I just think he's off. I don't think he is. I think he was raised with certain beliefs and he is okay yeah. with following those beliefs. Yes. I don't Idiot. think he's being blackmailed. Yeah. Idiot. That's the best thing I can say. Um, okay. Uh, uh, let me, okay, hold on. There's, there's lots of questions being added. Okay, we're gonna like answer the last few ones and then we'll have final thoughts. So just in case anyone. Yeah. Can Okay. I, I'm leaving for beach. I'm sleep. Yeah. We're going to just do the last <laughs> few ones and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. So, um, okay. Do, uh, did you know the folklore stories Violet was obsessed with would come into play later in the plot? When did you know? Yes. Because, the first time. Um, yeah. For anyone wondering the things I highlighted, 
this reading because this is the type of person I am. I highlighted every time a god was mentioned. I highlighted every time um, there was a, a, a folklore mentioned. And um, anytime there was a description of the dragons, um, I highlighted that. So anything that was lore that I knew my brain would not remember or um, regarding just like <laughs> literally this one says, I sent up a silent prayer to Zanal, the god of luck. Like those, those were the things that I highlighted because, you know, we've read enough of these books at this point to know that at some point we're going to need to know that information. <laughs> So I think the the folklore I knew from the beginning, but I will say I don't think that their gods are actually necessarily the gods that are. I would agree you know, because because Taryn was like I don't believe in your puny gods, and then when they met the Griffin writers, they said the Griffin writers were like praying to their gods, and they were like it's not they're not the same as yours. So I think in terms of like lying to the whole community that's within this region, they've also developed whatever this system is for gods. So I don't think those the gods that were mentioned are actually real. Um, someone said, we talked a lot about Mira, but someone said they felt like Mira was really rude in the beginning. Um, and that she pushed her towards Dane. Like, does anyone have a negative thought towards Mira? No, I, I really like Mira. I don't think she has ill intention. I think she pushed her towards Dane because she's thinking, you know, Mira's, I think Mira's whole thing is she doesn't want to lose another sibling. So she didn't like yeah. the idea of her sibling going into an extremely violent situation that she didn't think she was prepared for. I think mm -hmm. once she saw her succeed, those thoughts went away from her brain. That would be my yeah. opinion. Um, okay. Uh, well, I'm going to save that one to the very, very end. But this is a fun one. What's your opinion on how the book is written from the scribe's recollection of events? Anyone have My concern. Oh, you Sorry. muted. I, oh. Yep, yep, yep. I go. got excited. I was like mid-typing. <laughs> <laughs> um, my concern is that everyone will die. Like, like everyone but like one person will die. <laughs> mm. Avery, anything from you? I know I see you wanted to. I, I mean, I just love the fact that the, 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 of who the scribe is yeah. that's writing all of this. That's what I love about it. I think so it makes sad. sense. I think it makes sense because... That would be the only part, the only scribe, I think, that Violet would trust Agreed. to write her story. Yeah, I, it's so many, all of us were like, this is like Divergent with dragons. That's how I've literally been selling this book to people because it's the only way I can describe it. Except I keep being like, it's not going to be Allegiant because Allegiant, <laughs> in my opinion, and I think most of the book community's opinion was probably one of the worst books ever. Um, it hurt. It was just. It hurt a lot. I, I hated it. Um, but I, I kind of thinking about Kate, if she does pull an allegiant where the main, for anyone who doesn't know, I don't recommend reading that series anymore, but, um, the <laughs> main character dies literally 80% in the book. And then the last few chapters are in the, um, her like main lover's point of view, which was really weird because he never had a point of view ever in the series would have made more sense if he had a point of view earlier. I actually think if Rebecca did that, it would make sense and I'd be okay with it. Mm. I'd be pissed, but it would make more sense than mm. what happened in Allegiant. So, um, it's very Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah. It's very Mistborn. Mm -hmm. Is what it is. <sighs> yeah. I need to read that. Same. Yes, that's on my list. It's you on guys my have list. to read it. Yeah, I can't read anything until like September. Yeah, okay. Avery, Avery and I are locked in until we finish this stupid mass read. Online. I've got to get through July, and then I have two concerts in August, and then I'm free. Yeah. Gosh, when we finish, which I should clarify, when what I, what I mean by when we finish the mass, everything's going to be still there for anyone who wants to, like, go back and watch the lives and do all that. But when we finish the mass read along, Avery and I will be, like, the most annoying book people ever because we'll be like, okay, so we just read this. And everyone will be like, yeah, we read that six months ago. <laughs> we'll be like, okay, well, so sorry. We were too busy researching every little word. Sarah now we're going to talk about it. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, last two questions I'm going to ask. Um, and that is, oh, someone added this, which I think is funny. Favorite Zayden one-liner or action? And then favorite moment from Violet? Cammy, Cammy you've got it. Cammy, Cammy, Cammy. I know what my favorite Zayden moment is. Go. And it is that shadow lasso. And he was, when he pulls the dragon down and then the knife goes up. That was so cool. That was really cool. Listen, we love a shadow daddy here. 
It was very cool. I was like, a shadow lasso? Come on. I was like, are we getting phantom hands in this? Because that's not what I signed up for, but it's coming. I can just, if she, come on, Rebecca. That's what Do we it, all it. want. Um, I mean, I think my, one one of my favorite Zayden one-liners, I don't even know if you call it a one-liner, it was just hot, is is earlier when he says, I've already said it in this live, so I'm going to just say it again. Um, it's when he says that um, she spared you on the field. She was merciful. That is not a fault that I possess. And then he literally just offs everybody. in the room. <laughs> Yep. It's um, a great scene. It's so good. Yeah, uh, I I will say this is I, I I'm pretty I'm one of those people I, I say this all the time I don't um, tab spice ever I it's, do it's just it's just not a thing that I want to go back and like I don't I don't know when I go back and reread books it's not typically something I like am looking for it's usually lore or whatever world building however yeah, no, first, so the, she the, has to call me to send her spicy scenes I did yeah because at work they wanted the men to read silver flames and I called Avery and I was like can you give me some of the best spice scenes from that because I don't remember she did it in five minutes um but uh I did I didn't actually, have my book I did actually I tab just... <laughs> I did actually tab a spice scene a, a phrase that Zayden said and I still think it's hilarious which oh. is that was two if we're still counting and I say we clean up get the sand out of the bed and it would and get you to three maybe four if you're still awake and I was like oh they were my, working on five. Oh my okay. god like I was like Zayden <laughs> hello but but there's also the comment about how he doesn't share. Yeah. yeah, that was a good one. That was a good one. That was mm hmm mm hmm mm hmm. So it's like I like those little sexy moments where it's As not an only like, child. Who are you? Mm -hmm. Who are you talking? What god are you talking to? Because I'm the only one in this room and I don't share. I was like, was so good. Oh my god, he. Sure. She's she's done a really good job with his like banter, and I hope it like stays mm -hmm. in the series. Um, you know, yeah. it's not it's not a Lucian situation because that <clears throat> I need it. I need Lucian right. back. Yeah. Um, favorite Ooh. Violet moment. Actually, wait before we answer this, I have a because <laughs> Ashley, I want to bring this up because Ashley really doesn't like it. What do you all think <laughs> about the nickname Violence? I love it. Ten out of ten. <laughs> I hate it. I'm for it. Ashley hates it. She told me that before. She was like, wait till you hear the nickname. And I heard it. I was like, I think it's kind of cute. <laughs> I literally put that in my, I added it to my review. I was like, I am not a fan of the nickname, but all of my friends love it. Yeah. I think it's so cheesy. It works for the, for like, yeah, their I think it all, I think it only works for them. It doesn't work in any other situation. Yeah. Listen, we're 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 stepping up from Honeydew, okay? God it's, bless. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, like it. It's like of cute. all the melons, Honeydew. Wait, Cammie, what did you think? Do you like violence? Also, am I alone I go, here? I go back and forth. At some points, I was like, <laughs> it just doesn't roll off the tongue. Yeah, but it, I didn't. I didn't hate it. I didn't. I didn't mind it, but I did feel like there were times I was like, ah, it just doesn't like. Yeah, that was a motorcycle. Okay. <laughs> it was a motorcycle. <laughs> that motorcycle really picked up Ashley. It was like, <laughs> oh, is that from me? Yeah. <laughs> Motorcycles of San Francisco. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that was a motorcycle. <laughs> Sorry. Question mark? <laughs> it was a motorcycle. Um, yeah, uh, I, I liked it. But I think only because it was so cheesy, it worked. It was like so over the top that it was cheesy. Yeah. Yeah I, yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah. However, if she overuses it, like some books have, I might be like, mm -hmm. okay, I really don't like it. <laughs> I don't think she will. I yeah. feel like Zayden does a good job of balancing it a little bit. So we'll see. But anyways, favorite Violet moment. Anyone have one? Or what they can think of one? I liked her standing up against the guys for Andarna. That was, mm -hmm. that was one of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. I loved when she was poisoning the food. <laughs> that was so the oranges. Genius. <laughs> Every the oranges. <laughs> the oranges <laughs> was the best. The oranges. Just... I love when she wakes up and Zayden's like, oranges? Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just, it was one of those things where I was so impressed at how smart she was. I knew I would mm -hmm. like her as a main character. Yeah. It was the, um, 
I, I'm i blanking on what they call it. The American Ninja Warrior. Yes. The oh, gauntlet. Yeah. The gauntlet. Yes. Um, yeah, when she when she made it all the way through and used the knife and, mm -hmm. you know, we had gotten to that point and she hadn't made it all the way through, but uh -huh. we knew that she was smart enough to figure yeah. it out. I yeah. think that's another one of my favorite Taryn one-liners. He's like, I saw how you decided to mount up and like, we're not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think most of my favorites were with Taryn specifically, like when she was falling yeah. off and he was like, you better hold your seat as we land because you're going to embarrass us. I was <laughs> like, that's amazing. <laughs> He was like the most curmudgeonly old man. Like so it just good. made me so happy. I loved him. I love the pairing of them. Like it's yes. so good. It's so, so good. Oh, go ahead. There Ashley. is that one that one moment with um this is like an Andarna moment, but she's talking about like it's and you can just tell because she's like a baby. So she has like that kind of cute little like way mm -hmm. that she speaks. And she's talking about like, oh well, the first thing they teach us is this is like, well, actually it's to get goats but goats are my favorite like she like goes into this whole thing about like her favorite food <laughs> it's so cute it's just... literally my brain half the time I feel like it's just Andarna yeah yeah <laughs> my brain I just I just love when they realize she was a child <laughs> and then all the dragons yeah. are like yeah so um couldn't control her it's fine we voted she won like it was just like, we let a kid make a decision, people. Okay, like it was oh kid president, God. guys. Kid president. <laughs> kid president. I think um, they're my favorite characters. Oh yeah, the in the book for sure. are the dragons. Oh yeah, easily. I, I easily. think also with Andarna, like before we knew she was a baby, it was like when everyone was like talking shit about her, like when they were mm -hmm. doing what? What's it called when they were like presenting Freshen. or whatever? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like pretty much anyone who like talks shit about Andarna got like scorched on the spot. Like we didn't know she was a baby at that point, but the other dragons were like, not you talking about <laughs> this like kid. <laughs> like, bye. <laughs> yeah. Favorite Andarna moment. Um, when Violet was in danger and you can hear Andarna through her mind go, she's mine. And then <laughs> stops time. <sighs> yeah. Okay. So well, cute. I thought my favorite Andarna moment actually would be like when um, Violet was like, well, I say I was saving you. And she's like, or did I save you <laughs> about her getting her? I was like, she's, okay. She's so good. I just, I just love her so much. I love uh, her. It's, it's the absolute sass for me. Yeah. So I, I also, big personalities. I also really, I just love the first interaction where she was like, Andarna. And Violet's like, what? And she goes, Write it down. Tell them. And darn. And I was like. <laughs> well, and, it's, and, it's, and it's like Taryn's name. It's like not just and darn. It's yeah. really fucking long and convoluted. Right. And she's like, I'm sorry. What? She's like, what? And then they're all like, what? And then the minute she's like, and, and darn. And then it says, and everyone erupted. I was like, did you just take both of them? Like, it was just so cute. That was, it was cute. It was such an incredible way to do that, honestly. So. Um, okay. Well, final thoughts, anything, um, any final words, any final things? I mean, I think at this point we might, we might do a recap right before Iron Wing, like a really quick one. I don't know. I haven't, this is the fun Iron part. Flame. Iron, <laughs> Iron Flame. This is the really fun part for us, um, which probably is really only going to be me and Kate at this point. Um, God. Fire in the Flesh comes out a week after. Uh -huh. I have to start rereads. So I still have to do my some reason. So guide. yeah, um, it's we already have like a, a plan in place on how we want to to do it for anyone who's going to read both. Um, for anyone wondering, I recommend binging JLA's from Blood and Ash and Fire and Flesh types of books. So like that's going to be like people you need to read that in a week type of situation. Um, when we do our Iron Flame uh midnight because we're gonna do a midnight thing for that and then we're gonna wait like a two weeks before we do a spoiler chat so we're gonna give you guys more time for that one but not for fire and flesh sorry yeah iron flame's only 151 days away it's fine don't say it like that that's so close i know wow that wait that's we are really hard. lucky it's 151 days 151 days and then do you know what's crazy this is this is why I love being in fandoms because I remember when I was like younger and I was like really, really into Twilight, I would like start the countdown for um like the Twilight movies because I was like, I can't wait to see these. My thought when you said that was, okay, November, that means only two months away from 
like flame and shadow. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy to think about. Yeah. How many days is that? Oh, don't know me. And, okay, unless it got... changes. Unless it changes. Right. But as of right now. Mm-hmm. Um, Kate, can you explain Mira's signet? 235. I don't know. I've literally tried to find the, like, I know I have every signet that was mentioned. I put a tab on and I literally like can't find it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I do. I'm, I'm I not going to be what it was. like. It's the shields. Oh. Like she like can help yeah. the shields. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's she a shielding shields thing. in general, right? Because then she also did like a sound shield around with them when they were talking. Yeah. I think, I mean, we don't know any more detail than you guys know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, fall's going to be good for us. Oh, and then we're also doing a Tipsy Twilight book club. I'm so excited for that. I am like really, really excited because no, I... Pers- get tipsy. Okay, this just hit me though. So wait a second. Um, if Mira's signet uh-huh. is she has the shield power and the shield power also comes from the same material that they make the daggers out of, could Mira be way more important than we? Oh, yeah, think? absolutely. I mean, yes, but I'm very confused. But, I've only but I think her shield is more of like a, it's like a personal level. It's not like she could create the shield that supports the entire region no because that's why like when they were doing like the um the war planning class yes uh, you know what i mean like yes. one of their solutions was to send mira sorengale to help like boost the shields yes in that area like she was able to feed into it yeah yeah mm-hmm. okay is that kind of like to bring it back to twilight like Bella's power as a shield. Oh God, I forgot that was her power. But you know how she can like I expand told, it out. Into, can I tell you? Uh, okay, confession. Minute. I rewatched all of. They're all on Hulu right now, and I rewatched them last weekend. <laughs> I like binge watched. Can I tell you? I'm like so. I recent the re- well. Okay, Ashley and Avery, Kate. I don't know if you saw if you if you were in the group at the time, but when it was not. Oh, okay. So this was this was like two days into you adding me. Yeah. So we decided. I decided to do a uh, binge of the Twilight movies and I got really wine drunk and <laughs> like just since so so this is what sparked well I mean I wanted to do a Twilight reread anyways but um god Ashley I feel like I block everything out of Breaking Dawn after the pregnancy like straight up block it out it's it was so entertaining this is why we're gonna do a reread like, and I'm so sorry to discord but I might violate your community guidelines but we're gonna stream the movies in discord like we have to like have like a full watch party because like I just I need to experience this whole um thing and, again. and the really the really bad CGI baby is like <sighs> Especially now with how far things have come. Do you know that the baby they were going to use, like, it's obviously in Forks, the one that, the the animatronic one. But my favorite Mm -hmm. part about it is that the face is melting off. So it's, it probably won't be there for much longer because literally it's like, Oh my gosh. (laughs) It's called, it's called Chuck, Chuck Esme. (laughs) <laughs> it's like it's like in a glass case in like the Forks oh Town God. Hall. I like I'm being dead serious. That. I hate that. <laughs> being dead serious. Like, <laughs> but there's also so many famous people in that Movie. franchise. Now, you know yeah. that like start. Yeah, just even like Rami Malek and like all of these like very well known actors uh, now. Oh I can't remember her name, but the the like head lady in The Witcher with Yennefer. She's she's the one who calls uh the what's his faces on the Cullens. The Volturi. Oh. She's the one who calls them over the baby. That's oh. that the head mage in the Witcher. Hmm. Guys, it's gonna be like it's a <laughs> good time. It's it's also like the reason we scheduled it at when we did is because then we go literally right into like ho fast prep. And I was like, I need something that is so mind numbing in my brain before I jump into like full Sarah J. Mass again. So yeah. Twilight. Oh my gosh. Wait, somebody just mentioned Lee Pace. Yeah, Lee Pace is in it. Yes. Except for, like as in like Daddy Thranduil. Wait, when is yes. it? Wait, who, oh, is but he, he does it. Lee Pace is one of the vampires. Yeah, but he doesn't not. look like Lee Pace looks. He does not. Like, he looks at like at a all. Skull <laughs> <Lee Pace. laughs> it's, just, it's just so good. Like it. 
<laughs> these mo- <laughs> first off like i sorry silver flame spoilers um i don't know if anyone else read silver flames and when uh Feyre <laughs> gave birth but i was like oh sorry you are not pulling a Breaking Dawn right now. You are not pulling a Breaking Dawn. Down to the blonde taking the baby. Like, literally. I was like, oh, more has to take the baby. Like, go ahead and just put more and Rosalie in the same spot. Like, it is. Look at him. He looks like a stoner. What the heck? Who was he? Was he one of the... the he was one of the, like, the ones that they brought in to, like, be a witness or whatever. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, I forgot they did all and then, that. And then Listen. he, like, he likes the... The lady that does the shocking. I said the it. Shocking forever. power. I said it forever ago. I just really because Lee Pace is aging like fine wine, and he is also, you know, he's he's aging like fine wine, and so I need for him to play Baron Van Zara. Oh, oh, he would actually be so. I good need for, that. for him to. Oh. Oh. Mm. <laughs> oh my gosh it's okay we already decided who we were we already decided who ianthea is we found her give her oh, a job yeah. she's not going to be on reality tv any much longer so let's just go ahead and give rachel please that please stop what she'd be perfect she could pull off a blonde wig she was already no. wearing you know I'm being serious I, her- I listened to her hand uh the hand scene with her today because I was working on the summaries. Ew. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. Well, we've we've rattled on enough. But anyways, thank you guys. Thank you again for coming to another one of our lives. Our next one is Silver Flames. So I know you guys are um, very excited about that. Tomorrow I'm streaming Tiny Bookshop, which is a game that's coming out. It's a cozy game. You guys should definitely come for that. Definitely support it because I played it today. It is so freaking cute. Um, what was really funny was you in the game, you can like decide what type of genre of books you want to like fill like, your like bookshop with. And I was like fantasy and like covered it. And then the town didn't really like fantasy. So I had to adjust, but um, it was, <laughs> well, I had to go to a different town. It was like a whole thing, but anyways, it's a really, really fun game. It's super cute. So you guys should definitely um, come to that tomorrow. And then we have a game night. So we are doing some fun stuff. Oh, and then theory Thursday is like at some point this month. Yeah, it's not next week. It's not next week. Ne- Nothing this- is happening next week. Avery is at the beach. Avery is taking an actual vacation. I think you that, go I relax, think- babe. Yeah, you deserve the. I mean, we are doing things. Oh, we aren't doing anything next week. I don't know. Nope. I'll figure I something put out on the calendar. Do not schedule Avery for anything. Maybe <laughs> maybe Sarah will play a game next week. That might be yeah. a, a thing. But anyways, um, okay, hold on. Let me get all my situations on organized. Okay, music. Let me go ahead and say, okay, bye everyone. Bye everyone. Bye.